Hello, Michelle. Hello. Well, I read your book, uh, Yoga for Broken Heart, and I really much enjoy it, uh, especially since it really helped me to see and to kind of uh, be comfortable doing yoga again, because it's an intimidating practice for a lot of us. We do hear the benefits of it, but one of your mission, clearly, and it's clearly stated in this book, is that you want to make it accessible to anyone. Uh, you know, can you share? Can you share? Can you share how easy it can be, actually, and why we should not be so threatened by it, and um, and simply just walk in a yoga room and and, uh, and and enjoy the yoga sessions? Absolutely. Well, it is part of the reason I wrote this book was because I I wanted it to be geared toward the beginner, to someone who is intimidated, because people that are advanced already know the benefits of yoga. They've been practicing. But what about the person out there who's been wanting to try it for years and is too afraid to step foot in for whatever reason? They have negative chatter going on in their brain. I went there too. It's not about that. It's, it's about doing your best in the moment. Some days you're going to have a flowing practice and other days it's going to be really difficult and you're going to have to laugh at yourself. I have those days all the time where human beings, no one's perfect. Even the most advanced yogi who's been practicing for years falls down on their head every now and then. That's what it's about. I tell my stories in the book. I tell it all. I bear it all because I want people to realize I'm not on some pedestal. I'm not perfect. Yes, I come across as nice and calm and peaceful when I'm in front of my class, but I have my issues that I'm wrestling with in my mind, too. And that's what it's about. Whenever I've done yoga, I've never regretted it. I always come out feeling better when I'm done. So whether that means it's in your living room or if it's in a beautiful state-of-the-art yoga studio, it doesn't matter. It's what's going on inside of you that counts. But it hurts. <laughs> but it's all your perception of what pain is. That you have to ask yourself, you're, you're trying to put your foot behind your head in class one, that's your ego. You don't have to go there. Maybe you start with a different pose that works your way toward that. Maybe it's not the goal to get your foot behind your head. Maybe it's to feel calm with where you're at. You may never get your foot behind the head. Is that okay? Can you find that kind of acceptance, that truth, and feel it and be okay with it and be happy with it? Because let me tell you, as you get older, your body changes. It changes all the time. You go through different injuries. For instance, I'm a massage therapist also, and I recently injured my back. It's been a very humbling experience. I have had to go back to a very extremely gentle practice. And you know what? It's been like a cosmic do-over in my life. I have helped heal. I'm healing my back. I'm getting back the peace that I found when I was a beginner. You forget. There's times in your life that you become really advanced at something and then the universe kicks you in the butt and makes you start over. And that's humbling and it's wonderful and it gives you compassion for others who are in the same place. That's wow. what it's about. So I, I hear it. We're all in the same boat. We're all going through our emotions and it's really about accepting wherever we're at, accepting ourselves. And, and, and it's, a, it's a humbling experience. It's humbling, but it's also amazing and transformative. Once you get to that place of just, this is where I'm at, there's a transcendence. You know, if you, let's say you're sitting in a pigeon pose and it's a hip opener. A lot of people carry a lot of emotion and drama in their hips. It's painful. Can you sit with that and make it through to the other side? Can you not react? Can you not get angry at your body? Can you just be with it and then allow that relaxation to wash over you? Just in the same way you would allow a conflict. What would you do? You have different options. You can rage against the conflict. You can, you can deny it and, and have it manifest as some disease. Or you can be with it for a while before you move forward and figure out what the right course of action is. Your body gives you those messages if you allow the time to do it. That's the pain. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. Some people don't want to even go there. I don't want to feel that pain. I'm not ready to feel it. So they say, oh, it's yoga's too hard. I can't do it. Or it's too expensive. Yeah, that chatter, that chatter is just so loud each time we're in that yoga pose. And then it, it hurts and then you just want to give up. And, but you're, you're, what I'm hearing is that actually you can go beyond that pain. 
And if you go beyond that pain, you get the most wonderful, amazing experience. Most people don't reach that. They don't allow enough time or enough practice or enough consistency. It's all about consistent practice. Again, if you do it, did it for 10 minutes, but you did it every day, that's more important than doing two hour practices every, you know, once a month. It's not about being a weekend warrior. It's about practicing it, about staying to your word. And then you get to the other end and you find it starts coming into the other experiences of your life. That next time you're stuck in traffic and someone cuts you off, instead of getting angry, maybe you take a moment and you don't react as quickly. And you just say, oh, that's okay. You start to find that those little moments start entering into your life. It gives you a better quality of life. So... Well, thank you. That was very clear and uh, very enlightening. Um, can, is there a particular type of yoga? Because there's so many types of yogas, Ashanga or Bikram, or there's so many of them. Is there a particular one for beginners that you would recommend? I studied Ashtanga Vinyasa. It's, uh, it's one of the original forms of yoga by Sri K. Patabi Choice, who recently just passed away. He brought it out to America. Um, the vinyasa is the flow part of it. It's the creative side of it where you link the postures together. Ashtanga is always the same postures, but vinyasa maybe mixes it up a little bit, gives you modifications. Um, there's all kinds of different forms of yoga, and nowadays I think a lot of them are named after people. Uh, Bikram is Bikram Shadri. It's just people's names. It would be like me calling it Paisley Yoga. <laughs> But yoga, all yoga is one. It's about becoming one. It's about oneness. It's about unity. If you remember that, it doesn't matter which one you practice. Go with what feels right to you. You know instantly when you go into a class whether you resonate with a teacher, whether you resonate with a practice. I loved flow because I tend to be a type A type of person. My mind chatters a lot. I'm go, 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 go. In yoga circles, that would be considered registic. We're aiming for sattvic, the law of calm resourcefulness. Tamasic is the lazy, I don't want to do anything, couch potato. I'm usually resistic, and so I like it to flow. It's like a dance, and I minored in college in dance, so it's, that's what resonated for me. I love the creativity of it. But I would say any class you do, never push yourself into pain. If it's sharp and is saying, ow, stop it. No one's putting a gun to your head. Even if the teacher's telling you to do something that your body can't do, just say no. Honor your boundaries. That's mm -hmm. another yoga principle. And if it feels good, stay there. It feels wonderful, stay there. That's the beauty of having a home practice. Maybe some days you don't want to move to the next pose. You're loving it. You stay there. Other times, you may face a pose that's very difficult. Hip openers are extremely difficult for me. I used to keep them out of my yoga classes. I would skip them and say it was time constraints. But no, it was because it was my challenge. But that's the real breakthroughs when you face those poses. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your passion for yoga with us. Thank you so much for having me. Michelle Paisley is the author of Yoga for a Broken Heart, a spiritual guide to healing from breakup, loss, death, or divorce. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Lilu.